than it is through here. So we're going to have some effect here. That's why we're evaluating. We cannot consider that wall section R20 without considering the thermal bridge that comes into play here. And also, the window is the thermal bridge for that wall. That's why your baseboard heaters are at the back underneath your windows. Heat, right, passes out through, the cold air is there, it's more dense, it drops to the floor, we heat it, right? Okay. So I know they all just went through this. Okay, so you evaluate the stud first. Doesn't matter which one you do. So what I did, I went through the stud first. Remember, on the outside, there's a surface film resistance. That little strip, strip of thin air that's still, it provides some air value. Not very much, 0.2, you gotta know that. On the inside, because it's warmer still air, it provides an air value of 0.7, big R. Now we got to have a look at all of the materials that are in the assembly. Everything is the same, except we're going through this 5.5 inch stud, two by six is five by five, or 5.5. We go through the studs, everything, every component is exactly the same, except studs and insulation. So the second time we do it, we have to rub out the stud and put in five and a half inches of insulation. Once we evaluate the EPS insulation that's on the outside, the sheeting that's here next, then I go through the stud, once I go through the stud, then it's the jip rock, and then I have the RSI. I could have any wall component in there. All right, you need to go back to what we talked about in the class with the notes. All right, if you don't study this before you start this, you're gonna you're gonna run out of time. You're gonna run out of time before you're gonna lose marks because you didn't find something. Okay. So what we did is take the thickness of the insulation which is really the calculator. So we had 1.5 inches of EPS on the outside. I think it was half an inch uh, sheeting on the outside. Then we had the stud go through the jip rock here, right? I think our jip rock was a half an inch. Stud is five and a half inches. The sheeting was half inch. EPS was. So we do that same you thing. Got a, so, so you do the exact same thing, but just switch it to stud insulation. Yeah. So then you go into that chart that you guys got. Today. It's in, your, it's in your notes, so I said have it already. You gotta look up the resistivity or the p-value, which is based on the density. You look that up, and then you multiply that out, and it gives you an R value of that component, and then you add them all up. That will give you the R value going through that part of the stud. You convert it to a U value, which is one over R, so it's simple, right? Then you repeat the exact same process. Just with insulation instead of stuff. Now you put in VAT or whatever I tell you to stare. You multiply it out. Now the VAT turns to 3.5. Now the R value goes up. You do the reciprocal to give the U value. That should go down. Because U is a passage of heat, whereas this is the resistance. So it's the opposite, right? So now that we've got that done and that done, you would do the same thing with each window. Remember that the RSO and the RSI needs to be applied. The two layers of glass, argon filled, you fill in your table again. Do the same thing for the door, RSO, RSI, two sheets of steel, some sort of insulation that's on the middle of it. Repeat the same thing with glazing if it's there. That's what you did. You fill out this chart for going through the studs, going through the insulation, the window, the door, the glazing. It's basically five different terms. Now, for the overall U value, you go to your wall assembly first because you got to do two UDs or two UOs. Now we've got to figure out what the combination is, the weighted average for the studs and the insulation. So in this particular case, our studs, we take the U value that we calculated, we put it in here. Now we need the area. The area of the studs in a two by six is really 1.5 by, and 1.5 here. It's center to center. So that half of that would be 0.75, plus half of that is 0.75. So that's why I got the one and a half inches. So you're evaluating center to center. What's left over is the 24 inches on the center minus the 1.5. So now, that there is equal to 
two on the side. It's a weighted average based on 24 inches. Okay. Once we get that'll give us all the actual wall assembly. So that's just the wall as that's a whole. That's just the wall assembly itself. Like as a whole. Then we take the wall assembly that we just did. Now, right? Okay, let's just do the windows. We did the windows, you the windows, 48 square feet. So you okay. times, all the door. The, times all the U totals by the area yeah. of them. The door, 20 square feet. The glazing, 10 square feet. The wall assembly was 24 times 8, which is 192, minus the windows, minus the door, minus the glazing. So now we are left with 114 square feet. That's the weighted average. Divide that by the entire wall. You get a UT. We come up with the R value, right? And then R times 1.176 at the bottom of the chart gives us the metric conversion for it. Wait, so when you did that U total on the top, did you have to put that times A in, or could you do that step prior to and that? I did what? The uh, you said the, the U of the wall times 114. Could you do that step prior to that calculation? Yeah, you could have, right? But could just you, make sure when that Because when you found the U total. Yeah, so, like, okay. see. Uh, I think it's so just where you had it, like you had them separate brackets, and all the other ones were in the in the brackets yeah. themselves. I think that's what kind of thing, yeah. So you could easily, whenever your UT would be here, you could multiply that by 144, hmm. or sorry, 114, and that would give you the uh, yeah, well. Yeah, like it's it's better to do it this way, right? Because like this would be. U times A of the wall assembly, basically. Mm. Right? So if you lay it out here, if I see this process, like all I'm honestly, what I do is I look at your your R total. If your numbers are not like within decimal, like decimal places for that, then I'll then I'll go back and evaluate. If this is right, boom. Next one is right, boom. Okay? I look if this is not off, the first thing I look to see if you apply that. Right? Or did you apply 5.5 instead of 6? Right? That type of thing. 